How y'all doing? Um, I'm bringing the Facebook and YouTube about what happened to me earlier this morning. Um, I didn't think it was right. I mean, but everybody know that I'm in law enforcement. Um, I took. I decided to take a lunch break earlier this morning around 2:30. Um, I decided to go to the Waffle House. Uh, so I, you know, got in my car and I pulled out on 98. I went through one red light and I seen this young lady. She was walking. You know, she, you know, it was too cold outside. She had on shorts and she was toting a briefcase, a briefcase, I mean. Um, so, I, you know, the guy, kind of guy I am, I don't like to see people struggling or, you know, just wanting for stuff. So I just pulled over. And um, I said, excuse me, ma'am, um, can, I, can I be of assistance? And, um, she told me uh, she was kind of scared, you know, to catch rides with people. You know, uh, I showed her my badge. <clears throat> excuse me. I showed her my badge and told her that I'm, I'm on lunch break. I got to be, you know, back at work at a certain time. I, I wouldn't do nothing to that hurt you. You know, I said, it's too cold out here. You know, if you need a ride, you know, to any place, I, I'll take you. Uh, she said, okay, you know, got in. So uh, I had boxes in my back seat. So um, I got a briefcase and I put it in the trunk of the car. Um, you know, we got on the road. You know, I asked her her name. She told me her name was Sarah. Um, you know, she said she was from Pedal and that's where she wanted me to drop her off at. So, you know, I'm riding the Pedal. It's about 15 minutes away from my job site. You know, I'm on my way to pedal, you know. We laughing, joking around. I mean, having a you know, good old time. She was telling me about herself and everything. Um, uh, all of a sudden we made it to pedal like this, you know. The conversation was just that good. Um, as I made it to pedal, you know, uh, she told me to go down by wards and that's a fast food restaurant. Um, I know where that was. I told her I know where it is and I get her there, you know, and she'll be there in a few minutes. So I got over by war. She told me to take a right on, on the road. Yeah, uh, I think it was it, it was Ro 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 Rochelle uh, Lane, I think. Um, so we took that we took that right. Uh, the, the road was dark. I didn't see not one street light or anything. Um, it came off into a dark, dirt road, and you know my mind started wondering. I'm asking myself like, what am I getting myself into? Um, <clears throat> So, um, as we were making our way down there, um, she told me that the house should be like right, right directly in front of us at the end of this dirt road. So I made it, turned my lights on bright so she could see her way to the house without stepping on anything or falling, hurting herself. Um, I noticed when I pulled up and put the put my car in the um, park, I noticed that she started to get real, real emotional. So I looked at her and I asked her, you know, what's going on? You know, everything's okay. You know, she asked me to do her a favor, so I did. Um, I said, "Ma'am, I do you, I do you a favor, um, anything." She said, um, "Can you go up there, knock on the door, get my dad to come out and talk to me?" You know, I don't want to be in the midst of anybody. You know, especially family matters. You know, um, um, I was like, "Ma'am, I don't know about that. I, I just bring you home. Um, I don't want to, You know, what I'm saying." end up getting shot over this, you know. She was like, you know what I'm saying, please, could I? I got a soft heart, so I did it anyway. You know, I made it to the up there to the um to the door of the house and I I, I gave it um three solid hard knocks. And um the, the living room light popped on uh you know the house was kinda old so I can hear him walking I can feel the feel the port the porch uh, vibrating as he walked. So he came out he, he he looked at me and said, "Sir, may I help you?" You know, right then and there, I told him, "Sir, I didn't I didn't mean to bother you. You know, this early in the morning. Uh, I'm just here to, to return your daughter. Uh, she was walking, and I gave her a ride. You know, he kind of looked at me. You know, like with like with despite in his eyes, and I and I was like, you know." Is everything okay? You know, I'm saying that to myself, but I'm thinking about the situation. You know, he turned around, you know, and walked back in the house. So as I was finna leave, I heard him coming, thumbing back toward the door. I turned around, there was a double barrel shot going, pointing in my face. You know, all of a sudden, I'm like, sir, 
don't shoot me, you know, I, I ain't meaning to bother you this morning, you know what I'm saying, um, I'm here to return your daughter, she, she told me that she, that you live here and that she wants to be dropped off here, he looked at me, he said, I'm gonna say in his word, he said, what the hell is your problem, my daughter's been dead for five years, it kind of stunned me, I, I, I stood back, he said, you better leave, I said, sir, I don't want to leave with this girl in my car. I said, that's your daughter. She like, if that's my daughter, what's her name? I said, Sarah. All of a sudden, I look in his eyes, you know, kind of caught me by surprise. He lowered his weapon. And I was like, sir, she's right there. She's in the car. If you want to come out right now, you know, you can come, you can come get her. Yeah. I got to be back at work. So, um, you know, it's kind of dark out there, and the lights were bright, so it kind of blinded us. You know, as we made our way out there to the car, I kind of noticed that, that that front seat looked empty. All of a sudden, you know, nobody was there. You know, it kind of shocked me. I, you know, I, I wanted to leave, but I just didn't want him to be like, you trying to come over here and scope and steal someone and shoot me, you know. So I stayed there, and I stood my ground. He got mad, stood back, was finna draw again. I said, sir, hold on, hold on, sir. You know, she was just here. I don't know where she went. Maybe she, you know, got around, went to the back door of your house or something. I was like, sir, but don't kill me over this. I said, I wouldn't come at your house this early in the morning, you know what I'm saying, for no reason. I wouldn't do that. And I and how would I know that you that you stay here and your daughter named Sarah? You know. He kind of drew his weapon back down a little bit. I said, sir, hold on. I got one more thing. I said, um, her suitcase is in the trunk. You know, if you if you will, let me open the trunk and I can give you her suitcase. You know, he looked at me and said, let's go. So we walked in the back. Um, uh, I took the keys out the ignition. We walked to the back, um, opened the trunk. Sure enough, her suitcase was still thin right there. Um, I grabbed her suitcase, was finna give it to him. He looked at me and told me, I'm bringing up here to the porch. I said, sir, I don't I don't have time. I was like, uh, I just want to give me a little something to eat before I get in. I said, you know, you don't have to worry about it. I know how you feel. I, I ain't going to turn you in anything. He said, sir, please, if you don't mind, please bring this to my porch. So I took it to the porch, you know. I kind of noticed that he had a le like a limp to his walk. I guess, you know, due to a prior accident, but I, he probably couldn't pick up nothing, you know, with a little weight on it. So I brought it to the porch, and he, uh, he began to get emotional. I'm like, what's going on, you know? I'm thinking now that this guy's like high on drugs or something. And um, he was like, before you leave, can I ask for one more favor? You know, I said, sir, um, sure, you know, I mean, my lunch is almost over. He said, um, "Will you open this for me?" You know. So I set the I set the suitcase on this on flat, and um, I popped open the um, the lit latches. And the way the sound of it when it popped open kind of scared me because I thought he shot me. You know what I'm saying? So when it popped, I kind of jumped back. Um, I opened this suitcase, and we both back back. He said, "Oh my God." And, I start, I start shaking my head like this is this is not true, you know what I'm saying? You won't believe what was in that suitcase. You won't believe it. It was bull like the rest of this story is. <laughs> Y'all be blessed, man. John H, man. <laughs>